you want your kids to and on is the sin that's in our lives. And it is stuck there, and we can do nothing about it. It takes something much stronger than our own human effort or our own desire, no matter how much we may desire something, to do that. You know, we can look at a problem in our life and say, this is killing me. And if I continue to do this, just one more day may be the end of me. We can want it more than anything. We can try and try and try, and in the end, it will kill us, because we are weak creatures. But this is where the good news comes in, because Jesus came for his people. He came for sinners who hated him. He came and he lived a perfect life. He had no sins of ignorance. He knew all the law perfectly, and he followed it perfectly, even in intent. It's not just that he avoided big sins, he kept even the intent of the law. He went out and did everything that he was supposed to do. He avoided all the things that he wasn't supposed to do. He was the one person in human history who lived a perfect life. And because he lived a perfect life, his sacrifice was worth infinite amounts of redemption. And what he did with that is to die on the cross for his people. And the word that's used in the scripture is the propitiation. And you know, when you hear that word, you might not even know how to pronounce it because you don't see it very often. And the reason that we don't use that word very often is because we don't like the word as a culture. We don't like this idea. But it means that Jesus stood in front of God's wrath. That God was angry with his people. That he saw all the sin that we brought into the world and the way that we harm ourselves and the way that we harm each other. The way that we do it either in ignorance or in arrogance. And he said from the very beginning, if you sin against me, you will die. But in his forbearance, he has held back his hand for thousands and thousands of years. He could have struck us dead on the spot, but he held back and he waited for his own beloved son to come and live and die on the cross. So that when Jesus died on the cross, he took the sin and judgment of all of God's people there on himself. So that all of those things that we have done and would continue to do if it was not for him, were there punishing him so that we could be spared. And if we see this and God says to us, you know what, this is you. You are a sinner. You are hopeless without me. On your own, you will destroy yourself, and you cannot make it without me. If you see that, then that's God reaching out to you and speaking to you and saying, yes, repent, believe, follow after me. And if this is the first time you've ever heard that and God is moving in you, then listen to him and repent. Give up those things. Put your belief in Christ who has died for you and follow after him forever and be saved. Now, if you hear all of this and you think, oh, I've heard this before. You know, I've been in church 50, 60, 70 years, and I've, I've heard these before, and you know what, I'm fine. Because I go to church, and I don't do anything that's that bad. I don't know why preachers were always going on about this anyway. I keep listening. Because if, if you don't realize that you deserve hell, then that's exactly where we're headed. You know, God's people have heard for thousands and thousands of years this message. You can think about all of the Jews that were there in the wilderness. They had the law. They knew what they were supposed to do. They had God's own presence with them. And yet the large majority died out in the desert because they refused to listen to him. But God, in his grace and his mercy, has sent Christ for us. And he will send his Holy Spirit into you to live in you for a lifetime of salvation. The salvation from the sin that you bring on yourself and its consequences. Now, if you've heard this and you believe it today, come talk to me. If you've heard this before and you've believed it before, then ask yourself the question, is this my number one priority in life? Is this what I am about as a person, is bringing this message to other people? To say to them, yes, I am a sinner, and I did follow that sin with my whole life, but now God has saved me. And with the power of the Holy Spirit, I am fighting against it and fighting for Him. If this has not been the focus of your life as an individual, if this has not been the focus of our life as a church, then come talk to me afterward and we'll pray together. Because for this to be a year of revival in 2016, God has to get this into our minds, that we need to repent and believe and spread this message out. To go into the four corners of Pierpont, and yes, the areas beyond Pierpont, and find people that we might like, that we might not like, but to be here with us, repenting and believing and spreading the good news. And if God does that here, we'll have that year of revival. And that's what I'm praying for. And I ask that you would pray with me for that same thing. Now let's pray. God, we know uh, that we are entitled to nothing. 
that we deserve nothing but your judgment. We have sinned in all kinds of ways, sometimes in ignorance, others in arrogance, sometimes by the bad things that we have done, and sometimes by the things that we have just let go and not stepped in for. We know that we are all guilty. But we also know that you are a great and loving God. And that you sent Jesus here to live a perfect life and to die in the place of your people. I ask that if anyone here has never understood that, but that you are bringing that to their mind right now, that they would repent and believe today. In spite of the weakness of this message, in spite of the weakness of this people, I ask that you would work through it all and save your elect. I ask that you would light a fire under us, that more than anything else in the world, more than all of the difficult things that we face every day, more than all of the legitimate needs that we still need to attend to, that you would make this one thing our passion, to pray and beg you for revival in this place, for people that we don't even know yet. We ask that you would go out into the community and find those that are in the hardest situations, those that are suffering under addiction of their own sin that's destroying themselves and their families and the people around them, whether they know it or not, and we ask that you would send us out to those people, one and all, and that we would preach that message that all are sinners, that all fall short of the glory of God, but that you have sent your Son to die for your people. I ask that 2016 be a year of revival and a year of mercy alone. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Please continue to worship as we stand together and sing hymn number 488, Just As I Am.
folks. Uh, How are you? Good, good. You? Good. Good. It's nice to meet you. I haven't seen you for a while. Good to be here. I'm always up to you. Okay. Yeah.